Where do the LA Kings prospects rank amongst other NHL teams and amongst teams in the Pacific Division? We'll talk about that next on this edition of Locked on LA Kings. You are Locked on Kings, your daily podcast on the Los Angeles Kings. Part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. Today's episode is brought to you by Bet Online. Bet Online has you covered this season with more props, odds, and lines than ever before. Bet Online, where the game starts. Hey, Kings fans, welcome to Locked On LA Kings, your team every day. Thanks for making Locked On LA Kings your first listen every day. We are free and available wherever you get your podcasts and on YouTube as well. Please like and subscribe if you're enjoying this content. And by the way, we are at 502 subscribers. Thank you, Kings fans, so much. I asked if we could get to 500 by the weekend. And you guys absolutely delivered. Great job. Thank you very much. My name is Eddie Garcia. I am your host of Locked on LA Kings. I've worked in sports media for almost 30 years, the past 20 plus years at the Fox Sports Radio Network, where I'm a co-host, sidekick, reporter, and NHL insider. Also co-host of the Puck Podcast, a weekly NHL review show that's been putting out content for the past 16 years. And of course, a longtime passionate LA Kings fan for the past 30 years. We are 46 days away from the LA Kings season opener, October 11th against the Vegas Golden Knights. I know we are all counting down the days and very excited about the upcoming season. Uh, We are um, on a Friday, and that means it is time for our weekly email segment that we have every week where we read some of the listener and viewer emails. Uh, And we are going to get into that in just a little bit. But we're going to start off by um, reading a question that we had from Twitter uh it is at locked on la kings by the way um and it also kind of ties into a recent article i read um about prospects in the nhl so the tweet came from locked on kings listener tristan he is at tristan in the oc uh and he asked would you trade the king's scouting department for the ducks they've been killing it recently with their picks uh i am going to answer that question in just a moment Um, But we had an article this week in The Athletic by very highly respected prospects uh, writer, um, Corey Pronman, uh, does great work over there at The Athletic. And he wrote an article entitled NHL Pipeline Rankings, Breaking All 32 Teams Down. And so I'm like, well, that kind of ties into uh, a little bit about the Twitter question. Where do the Kings rank? We've heard a lot of positive news regarding the Kings as far as having this deep prospect pool. So uh, I was curious to see where did Corey Pronman have uh, the LA Kings currently ranked? And also because of Tristan's tweet, where were the Ducks as well? So we're going to break down briefly, and we're going to give you the results of uh, Corey Pronman's uh, rankings for the uh, Kings and Ducks overall, and also the rest of the teams in the Pacific Division. And we're going to see Corey Pronman's. We're going to read his top 10 LA Kings list of prospects. And then I'm going to give you my top 10 list of LA Kings prospects. It's a little bit different than what Corey Pronman has. So let's uh, let's start off by telling you kind of what the parameters were for Corey Pronman's list of rankings for all the prospects in the NHL by team. Uh, he had the players that were 22 years or younger as of September 15th of 2020. Uh, regardless of how many NHL games they have played, those players, again, 22 years or younger, as of September 15th, 2022, were eligible to be on his prospects list. As far as the Pacific Division, we're going to give you where each team ranked in the division and overall in the NHL. And according to Corey Pronman, the number one ranked team as far as prospect pools from the Pacific Division was the Anaheim Ducks, who ranked fourth overall in the NHL. If you were curious, Buffalo was his number one ranked uh, team as far as talent pool uh, currently in the NHL. The LA Kings check in at number two as far as Pacific Division teams, 10th overall in the NHL. That is down five spots from a year ago when they were number five in the NHL. You've got the Canucks at number three in the Pacific, 14th in the NHL. The Kraken are fourth in the Pacific, 15th in the NHL. You've got the Oilers ranked number five in the Pacific, 18th overall in the NHL as far as prospects pools. Uh, Number six in the division would be the Sharks, 21st ranked overall. The Golden Knights check in at number seven, 26th overall. And then the Calgary Flames bringing up the rear at number eight 
uh, in the Pacific Division. 28 out of 32 NHL teams, the Calgary Flames. Apparently, uh, the prospects in uh, in Calgary, not so good. So let's break it down as far as what we're concerned about with the LA Kings. And curious to see what Corey Prodman had to say. Who are the top 10 prospects currently in the Kings organization? And again, the parameters were uh, 22 years or younger as of September 15th of 2022. And it doesn't matter how many NHL games that you have played. So here is Corey Pronman's top 10. Uh, we'll give you a quick little bio on them. I'm sure you're probably familiar with it, but, uh, but if not, you get the information on him. Uh, Corey Pronman had Quentin Byfield uh, ranked as the Kings number one prospect uh, forward, uh, 19 years old, 80, uh, excuse me, second overall pick in the 2020 draft. 40 games last year with the LA Kings. He had five goals and five assists. At number two, Corey Pronman has forward Arthur Kaliev as the second ranked prospect in the Kings organization, 21 years old, second round pick, 33rd overall in 2019. 80 games last year with the Kings. He had 14 goals, 17 assists for 37 points. Third ranked prospect for the LA Kings, according to Corey Pronman, is defenseman Brant Clark, 19 years old, eighth overall pick in the 2021 draft, yet to make his pro debut. Um, not eligible to play in the AHL uh, this coming season. So it's either back to juniors or with the LA Kings this year for the highly touted Brant Clark. The number four prospect in the LA Kings organization, according to Corey Pronman, is forward Alex Turcott. Uh, he is 21 years old, fifth overall pick in 2019, 59 AHL games over the last two years with 12 goals and 27 assists and just a couple of handful of, of NHL games. Uh, the fifth-ranked prospect for the Kings, uh, he has Rasmus Kupari, 22 years old, first-round pick, 20th overall in 2018, 64 NHL games, uh, 57 of them coming last season. He had six goals and eight assists. Uh, at number six for Corey Pronman, LA Kings prospects, Samuel Fagamo, 22-year-old, second-round pick, 50th overall in 2019. Uh, he had his first full AHL season last year, 27 goals, 17 assists for 44 points. Uh, the number seventh prospect, according to Corey Pronman, is defenseman Jordan Spence, 21 years old, fourth round pick, 2019, first full pro season last year. He had 42 games, or excuse me, he had 42 points uh, in the AHL uh, in 46 games and also 24 games at the NHL level uh, in emergency uh, status and, and performed very well. At number eight, got to admit, this is a player I have not heard much of at all. Uh, it's a defenseman, uh, Krill Krasanov, 19 years old. He's played 53 total professional games over two seasons in the KHL for SKA St. Petersburg. Um, he had a total of nine points and no goals in those two pro seasons playing in the KHL. Uh, I do not know much about that player at all, frankly. Um, at number nine, he has defenseman Tobias Bjornfoot. 20, 21 years old, first round pick, 22nd overall in 2019, 106 NHL games for Bjornfoot, 70 last season. He finished with eight points and the number 10 ranked prospect out of 10 for Corey Pronman of the Athletic. He has four Jack Hughes. Um, he's 18 years old, second round pick, 51st overall for the Kings in this past year's draft, uh, the 2022 draft. That's pretty high praise for 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 Jack Hughes uh, in my opinion and a, and a good sign if Corey Pronman thinks he is that good all right so I'm going to give you my top 10 prospects for the LA Kings in a moment but first if you'd like to place a wager on the LA Kings to win the Stanley Cup next season betonline.net is the fastest and easiest way to check in on all your betting needs find all your favorite sports and events at the number one online source for odds lines and games find reviews and news of every league including major league baseball combat sports, esports, even golf. Head to Bet Online and use your mobile device to learn more about the action happening today. That is Bet Online, where the game starts. All right, so here is my list of the top 10 prospects currently in the Kings organization, according to the parameters set by Corey Pronman of The Athletic. And look, Corey Pronman knows way, way more about the NHL overall prospects than I do. But I'm pretty confident in my opinion when it comes to the LA Kings. He look, he has to cover 32 teams. He has a wealth of knowledge. I wouldn't expect him to know um each individual team better than someone who only basically follows that team. So I'm I'm kind of cutting in some, some slack here. Like I said, overall knowledge of the NHL, he would destroy me. All right. But when it comes to the LA Kings, like I said, I feel pretty good about my knowledge of uh, and my opinions of the Kings prospects. And certainly you can have your opinions as well as far as his list and my list. So here is my top 10 list of Kings prospects. Number one, Quentin Byfield. Number two, 
Arthur Kaliev. Number three, Brant Clark. So it's the exact same three that Corey Pronman had. And I don't think there's up, there's not much debate, in my opinion, with that top three. Um, Quentin Byfield, I know he he's he's someone that a lot of Kings fans are already kind of uh, he's a polarizing figure in some ways because he was ranked or because he was drafted so high number two overall and and fans expect that guy to make an impact immediately. He didn't do that. Now, there were some circumstances surrounding that, as you I'm sure you all know, the injury issue that had him set back with the ankle um, and just getting his feet wet as a 19 year old in the NHL. I, I thought, look, it wasn't what we all hoped. But I think, to be fair to him, this is the season where I think we really uh, get to see what Quinton Byfield has. I expect to see him take a pretty significant step forward and show a lot more uh, of the uh, of the excitement uh, that we all were feeling when we heard about him when he was drafted and and you know seeing the highlights and the things that he did. Uh, again, still a very young player, but I, I expect to see a fairly significant jump in his numbers this season hopefully fingers crossed with a full healthy training camp and ready to go and be I think pretty much locked in as the center on the third line going into the season so I still have no issues with putting Quentin Byfield as the top prospect in the Kings organization Arthur Kaliev a very solid season last year 80 games his first real NHL action and 37 points that's a pretty solid contribution uh, from a rookie Uh, I think he's going to get more uh, playing time this year on that second power play unit. Um, it's possible he could see action on the third line. We've got an email about that actually coming up in a second. Um, or actually, it was maybe this, even the second line, I think they were talking about. Yeah, the second line, uh, one of our listeners thinks he should get time on. Um, I'm thinking more of the third line. But Arthur Kaliev, I think, uh, very solid as the second-ranked prospect for the LA Kings. And then Brant Clark, look, he hasn't played a second of NHL action. He hasn't even played a second of professional action at this point. But again, going by what everyone is saying, and I trust a lot of the opinions uh, of these people, like a Corey Promen, um, that this guy is going to be an NHL player very soon. Not likely this year, but likely next year. And he's a guy who has a lot of offensive upside, is a guy who's going to make a pretty immediate impact at the NHL level. So again, Quentin Byfield, Arthur Kalia, Brant Clark, I think that's fairly... Uh, I think that that's pretty consistent. It's that's going to be the top three. I think if you polled most Kings fans who are knowledgeable about the Kings prospects, I, I feel pretty confident that would be the top three. Um, as far as number four, uh, Corey Broadman had, had Alex Turcott, And certainly when he was drafted, this is a guy who uh, looked to be an impact player fairly soon at the NHL level. He it was very accomplished, um, you know, at the junior level playing for team USA uh, and showed a ton of skill. Um, unfortunately, it hasn't worked out so far for Alex. Um, injury issues have certainly been a big part of that. I have a hard time ranking him that high, to be honest with you. I, I, I have him in my top 10, but not at number four, not ahead of guys like Jordan Spence. I've got Jordan Spence as the number four prospect for the LA Kings, and I admit I have a bit of a fan crush on, on Jordan Spence. We, we all have those guys that we either like or or don't like for legitimate or non-legitimate reasons um, but I'm a I'm a big Jordan Spence fan I love how quickly he adapted to the NHL level and had a solid season playing in the AHL his first professional season for the Ontario Reign uh, he's a guy who could definitely be um, a quarterback on the power play he's got uh, some exciting offensive skills and he's very calm and makes a lot of great decisions in his own zone with the puck, I've got I've got Jordan Spence as the fourth ranked prospect for the LA Kings. Um, Corey Pronman had Rasmus Kupari at number five, as do I. Um, I think we all expect to see a little bit more from Rasmus. I don't know if he's going to start the season with the Kings. Um, probably not because he's waiver eligible. He can go down to Ontario without being claimed off waivers, where other players uh, don't have that. Um, but you know, a, a 20th overall pick, pick in the first round. Um, I think we expect a little bit more for him I, I, going forward. We'll see what kind of playing time he gets at the NHL level this year. But I've got, I've got like Corey Promen, um, Rasmus Gupari ranked number five. Corey Promen had Samuel Fagamo at number six. Um, I've got Tobias Bjornfoot. Um, and I know I've mentioned before talking about him, he's very quiet on the ice, but he's played over 100 NHL games already. Um, and you know, uh, he still has um, to prove that he can he can contribute something offensively. Um, but defensively, he's still a very solid player. He's going to get, uh, you know, barring any kind of injuries or anything um, with him, he's going to get significant playing time on the back end. 
Uh, and I think when you've played and you know, when you've uh, 21 years old and you've already played over a hundred NHL games, I think you've got to be pretty high on the list of prospects according to his parameters for picking him. So he had Bjornfoot ninth. I've got him sixth. I've got Alex Turcott as number seven. Again, um, has, you know, not really matured uh, or developed, I should say, into the pro that we all hoped he would be when he was selected uh, fifth overall in 2019. Hopefully for Alex Turcott, I've said this before, I'll say it again, just stay healthy. Just stay healthy, get a full season in, regardless of where that is, have a solid season, and then we can kind of go from there uh, when it comes to um, Alex Turcott. I've got Samuel Fagamo as my eighth-ranked prospect for the LA Kings. Um, Corey Pronman had him at number six, so not too much difference there. But I, I really like Samuel Fagamo's game. Very, very solid season in the AHL last year. Um, would love to see him get um, a little bit more of a chance at the NHL level, but there's not very many spots available for him at this point. So he's just going to have to bide his time, continue to perform well at the AHL. If there are opportunities for him to get called up, make the most of it and and, and show what you can do. Still a, still a top 10 prospect for the LA Kings without question. Uh, at number nine, I have defenseman Helge Granz um, uh, as one. He's in my top 10. He was not in the top 10 for Corey Pronman. He was in the top like 20 for Corey Pronman, but we, we cut it down just to the top 10. Um, but the a young defenseman out of Sweden, and I think because of him, I think the Kings were very comfortable in trading Brock Faber to the Minnesota Wild for Kevin Fiala um, because of the depth they have. And not just Brant Clark, but because of Helga Granz, a guy who they think can come in and play, uh, I think, at the NHL level on the blue line in the next couple of seasons. And, and again, that was why they I think they felt comfortable trading um, Brock Faber to Minnesota because of the depth uh, that a guy like Helga Granz brings to the LA Kings um, system from uh, the defensive side of things. So I've got Helga Granz at number nine. And at number 10, I've got Kasper Simon Tybel, um, the Finnish forward who performed so well at the World Junior Championships uh, this past uh, month. And again, maybe that's being a little bit of a prisoner of the moment. Um, but when you go in the World Juniors and you score five goals with four assists in seven games and help your team win a silver medal, um, that's, that kind of goes a long way. It's a pretty high level of competition there. He performed in the spotlight. And so because of his recent play at the World Juniors, I've got Casper Simon Tyvel uh, from Finland as my number 10 ranked prospect for the Kings. So again, real quick, Corey Pronman had Quentin Byfield, Arthur Kelly of Brant Clark as his top three. I do as well. Uh, he had Alex Turcott, Rasmus Kupari, and Samuel Fagamo four through six. I've got Jordan Spence, Rasmus Kupari, and Tobias Bjornfoot. Uh, he had Jordan Spence at number seven with Kirill Kursanov, Tobias Bjornfoot, and Jack Hughes rounding out his top 10. Uh, I had Alex Turcott at uh, number seven, Tobias Bjorn at six, Alex Turcott seven, Fa Samuel Fagamo, Helga Grands, and Casper Simon Tybel, uh rounding out my top 10. So there you go. Uh, a look at the Kings prospects, where they rank as far as what I think and what Corey Pronman of The Athletic thinks as well. So, okay, so back to the question from Tristan on Twitter. He asked, would you trade the Kings scouting department for the Ducks? Uh, it's a very, uh, legitimate and interesting question. I'm going to hedge a little bit on this because there are some, uh, there's some different ways to answer this. Uh, the ducks right now, as, as Corey Promen ranked them fourth overall, they've got a lot of good young talent as they are rebuilding, uh, their high end talent, their top guys, their top three guys. When you talk about the Kings, Quentin Byfield, Arthur Callia, Brant Clark, the ducks top three right now, pretty much head and shoulders above the Kings top three. You're talking Trevor Zegras, who finished runner-up in the Rookie of the Year voting last year. Uh, I'm sure I'm not breaking any news here. There were no Kings that finished in the uh, in the in the any no votes for Rookie of the Year for any LA Kings. Uh, Mason McTavish is going to play in the NHL for the Ducks this year. He tore it up, dominated at the World Juniors this year. He looks to be a, an impact player very soon. And then on defense, they've got Jamie Drysdale, and he has. If, you, if you're going to compare him to Brant Clark, there's no comparison because Jamie Drysdale is doing it at a, at a very high level at the NHL level right now. Um, if you were going to compare him to somebody like Tobias Bjornfoot, Jamie Drysdale's numbers blow Bjornfoot out of the water. Uh, so right now for the Ducks, their top guys are legitimate impact guys right now. If you're looking at the Kings overall talent pool, though, I would say that the overall pool is deeper than what the Anaheim Ducks have. Um, but again, if you're talking about impact at the top with your top three or four players, the Ducks definitely get the advantage. As far as what I picked the Ducks over the Kings, if you're talking in the last couple of seasons, yeah, because they have drafted impact players. 
But the Kings have had a scouting department in place with Mark Yannetti for 17 years. I don't know how long the Ducks scouting department has been together. I'm pretty sure it's not 17 years. So again, a, a longer, a, a, a bigger book uh, to read from for the LA Kings, uh, a, a shorter book to read from for the Ducks. So uh, again, in the short term, yeah, I'd probably take the Ducks. In the long term, I would take the Kings. I think the Kings talent pool is deeper than the Ducks, but the Ducks higher end players are higher at this point. So it depends on what you what you like, what you think is more valuable, and what is more valuable to an organization overall um, to, to kind of answer that question. Uh, we have a list of emails to get to, um, but first, I want to let you know that if you're hanging out with some friends and putting back a few drinks, sometimes if you become too many and the evening comes to an end and people start to head out and you think about calling for a ride, but now you live nearby, you can make it home okay. It's no big deal. What are the odds you're going to get pulled over anyway? And even so, what's the worst that could happen? Your insurance goes up, you lose your license, you lose your job, you total your car, you kill someone. Everyone knows about the risks of driving drunk. The results are tra tragic and often deadly. However, that still doesn't stop everyone from getting behind the wheel under the influence. That's why police officers are out there right now looking for impaired drivers on our roads to save lives. So if you think you're okay to drive after a few drinks, think again. Play it safe and plan ahead to get a ride. It only takes one mistake to change your life or someone else's forever. Drive sober or get pulled over. All right, let's get to the uh, emails from this past week. Our first one comes from Joe in Long Beach, and he says, Love the pod and enjoying hearing the other Pacific Division podcasters as guests during the dog days of summer. My question is, if you were GM controlling the roster and head coach controlling the lines, how would you assemble your four forward lines for opening night with the current players under contract? Personally, I'd go with line one, Andre Kopitar, Adrian Kempe, Kevin Fiala. I think that's pretty obvious. Line two, Arthur Kaliev. Uh, Philip Deneau and uh, Victor Arvidsson. Uh, he's got on his third line, Alex Iafalo, Quentin Byfield, and Gabe Velarde. And for the fourth line, Trevor Moore, Blake Lazat, and Carl Grunstrom. He says Lemieux and uh, Jared Anderson Dolan are my scratches. He says expose Anderson to waivers. Thanks. Keep up the great work and go Kings go. Uh, Joe, that's a pretty solid uh, starting lineup uh, as far as the forwards go for opening night. Um, the only one that I would probably not do, but I understand your thinking is Arthur Kaliev playing on the second line and demoting Trevor Moore to the fourth line. Um, I think in the end, when it plays out, I could definitely see something like that happening sooner rather than later. Um, but I think Trevor Moore with the year he had last year has earned the right to be on that second line. You can't demote a guy um, who's who performed so well and had career highs across the boards last year. I just, and the chemistry that he has with Deno and, and with uh, Arvidsson, I think is, is apparent. You could argue, like I said, like many said that they were the real number one, one line of the Kings last year. So I'm really hesitant to, to tinker with that at this point. However, do I think Arthur Kaliev's upside is greater than Trevor Moore's? I do. Um, and could I see this happening very easily if, let's say Victor Arvidsson doesn't start the season healthy. Could I see uh, Arthur Kaliev maybe sliding up into that spot? Or or if there's any issues, could I see Kaliev because of his talent being a second line player sooner rather than later? I do. So I get what you're saying. I just think, uh, you know, maybe from just a number standpoint or a potential standpoint, I, I, I get where you're coming from. But I think you also have to take into effect the chemistry, you take into effect um, of the locker room, and I don't know that it would sit well, frankly, with with other players. Uh, if you if you demote a guy from the second line to the fourth line who had career numbers across the boards, I mean, look, if you think that's the best for the team, then you do what's best for the team. But I, I would be, I think at some point I could see that happening, but I don't see that happening for for opening night. So I would uh, I would not agree with that. I do like Carl Grunstrom on the third line or the fourth line, excuse me. Um, with Lemieux and Jared Anderson Dolan being the scratches and gave Velarde on the on the third line. I think it's time for us to figure out what he can do, give him more of a role. I, I think on the fourth line, that would be difficult for him. So, um, yeah, I think that's very solid, very solid opening night as far as the forwards go. Our next email comes from Eric and Anna in Las Vegas. So he says, the other day, um, oh, he says, the other day, another subscriber and I were discussing the goaltending situation with the Kings specifically. We were talking about the hypothetical situation where Quickie is injured, God forbid. Do you know if the Kings coaches and management are preparing for such a situation? I know Peterson didn't have a great record last season with an 894 state percentage. Do you know if they're planning anything with him 
Uh, we're pumped for the new season, but worried about Peterson. Thank you for your great content. We hope you are growing your fan base and it keeps growing again. Thank you to Eric and Anna in Las Vegas. Um, do I think the Kings have a contingency plan if Jonathan Quick gets hurt or if uh, Cal Peterson doesn't perform? Uh, look, if, if Jonathan Quick gets hurt, Cal Peterson's the guy. Period. End of story. He's the guy. Um, would they go out and get someone else to um, be uh, in that? I don't. I don't. I don't see that happening. Um, I think, like I said, if Quick gets injured, it's Cal Peterson's net. Uh, sink or swim. So, uh, you know, we, we're all kind of curious if Cal is, 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 is going to be the guy eventually, um, that would be one way to find out one way or another. Uh, and I hope that does not happen, but as far as any other contingencies, I don't, I don't think so. I think, like I said, if Jonathan quick gets hurt, then Cal Peterson has the net and, uh, sink or swim. So I hope that doesn't happen, but again, it would be a very quick way to figure out whether Cal Peterson is the guy or not. Uh, our next email comes from Mark in Santa Barbara. He says, you mentioned every show about how long you've worked in sports media, and you mentioned Bob Miller when you talked about the passing of Vince Scully. Just wondering what your thoughts are on Kings TV broadcaster Alex Faust. Um, Yeah, I mean, much like uh, Joe Davis with the Dodgers replacing Vince Scully, uh, very, very difficult to try and fill the shoes of Bob Miller for Alex Faust. Um, but I think he's done a solid job. Um you know, it would have been interesting to see if maybe the Kings would have decided to give Nick Nixon the job. If you don't know, Nick Nixon is the longtime and Hall of Fame radio broadcaster for the Kings. Um, I would love to have seen Nick get a chance to follow Bob Miller. Um, I, I assume he would have accepted that job if it was offered to him. Um, but I get why they went with Alex Faust. They, they, they wanted to replace a legend with kind of a young up and coming guy that could fill that role for years and years and years to come and be kind of the next voice. Of the LA Kings, I mean, I think he does a solid job. I really do. I I, I think Alex Faust uh, calls a good game. Um, I, I think he's he's got good timing. Um, I think he has great chemistry with with Jim Fox. Um, and you know, it takes a little time for people to get used to a new voice. So I know there's some people that maybe they it, it's taken them a little while to kind of embrace Alex Faust as the voice of the Kings. But in my opinion, I think he calls a very solid game. I think he's one of the better young up and coming. NHL broadcasters out there. So um, I, I enjoy what he does. Um, but I, like I said, there's, there's a part of me that would have liked to have seen maybe Nick Nixon uh, get a shot at that job. Hey, thank you so much for everyone who emailed this week. I appreciate all the kind words and your support. I um, want to remind you to keep up to date with this show and what's going on with the LA Kings. Please follow us on Twitter. We are at Locked on LA Kings. If you'd like to send me an email with any comments or thoughts like Joe and Eric and Mark did this past week, the email address is LockedOnEddy at gmail.com, E-D-D-I-E, LockedOnEddy at gmail.com. I want to thank you for making Locked on LA Kings your first listen every day. Now make your second listen, Locked on NHL. Locked on experts give you a daily 30-minute podcast of all things NHL all year long. Stay up to date on everything in the hockey world. Locked on NHL, your daily 30-minute NHL podcast. Uh, thank you again so much for listening and watching Locked on LA Kings. And thanks again for helping uh, this channel uh, on YouTube to hit the 500 subscriber mark. Really appreciate that. I am Eddie Garcia. Go out and have yourself a great weekend. And as always, go Kings go.